Hi everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line. I am back this week with a new video for you all. Um, this week I'm going to talk about coats. Because in the UK the weather is changing, I, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think about making coats. Should have probably started making this my coat like three months ago, but obviously not that organised. So it is now starting to get cold. I'm thinking about coats and I thought I'd share some of my favourite patterns and things that I'm thinking about making with you guys because I thought you might find it interesting. I've also included a couple of like lighter weight coats for people who are not in the UK so that it is not all kind of woolly woolly woolly. Um, before I get going I just really wanted to say a massive massive thank you to everyone. Um, in case you missed it, last week we launched an online pattern shop and I just want to say thank you for all the lovely messages and the positive responses and thank you for being so patient with all the glitches on the site, they're still getting fixed but yeah it was something that Rachel and I had worked really hard on and we were a bit nervous about and yeah it was just we just got such a nice response so I just want to say thank you like it has been yeah it kind of it's been a full-on week but it's been really lovely and yeah so thank you for you all, all your nice comments. Thank you for people who ordered as well. That's really, honestly, every time one comes through, I'm literally like, yeah. So, um, yeah. Right, coats. Let's talk coats. Um, before we get going on, on the patterns, I just, there's a couple of things when making a coat that I thought would be useful to share. So the first thing, and I think, one of the, the most important things. So once you've picked your fabric, which is obviously crucial to finding the right sort of fabric, and that is very dependent on what coat pattern you're choosing, interfacing. Interfacing on a coat is so important. It will transform your make from something that looks a bit homemade to something that looks like it's come out of a shop. It just adds that structure, it makes everything a bit crisper and actually makes it a lot easier to work with. So investing the money in the right interfacing is going to literally sort out your make. So the interfacing that I use and I think I, we, Rachel and I have done quite a bit of kind of experimenting, the one that we think is the best is, um, I'll pop a link down below, is the um, it's the tailoring interfacing from Sew Over It. So it is designed to be put onto wool um, and if you don't get the right interfacing it can almost work against the fabric. So this one that is meant to do that, it moves with the fabric, it's got a, enough movement in that it will kind of work with it but also add structure to it. So that is my top tip do not skimp or get the wrong interfacing because it can literally ruin your project. Um, the next thing um, is a really obvious one is pressing. So when you press your seams with wool, it is so important to do them properly because this will also transform how your finished garment looks. So a lot of people use, um, I think it's called a clacker, which is a wooden implement which you place on top of your seams after you've pressed them and it holds them in place. I don't have one of those, to be honest, I actually just use a book. So what I will do is I'll press with my, I'll press it down, like pressing the seam flat, press, 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 steam, 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 and then I will put something on it to weight it and I leave it there almost until it cools. This is really important, this sets the fabric so it will instantly look a lot better. It holds its shape once it's cool. I think it's that thing, if you leave it there to cool, it then really, really holds its shape. So those are my sort of two tips when making coats. And also for those of you who haven't made one before or you're new to the coat making game, it really isn't as hard as everyone says it is. It's actually, I actually find them one of the easiest things to make. Quite a lot of the coats that I'm talking about today are fully lined. It hides all the mess, like it really isn't hard. So don't, you know, don't be put off. You can definitely, definitely make one. So the first coat that I'm going to talk about is one that Rachel has made. We haven't got a pitch yet, but I have tried it on and I'm definitely, definitely going to make this because it's so good. So this is the Yates coat from Grey Line Studio. This comes in a UK size 4 to 22. 
It is available in our shop. I'll pop links down below to all the patterns so you can either go and have a look at them or yeah, go and have a look at them. Um, this is a really, really lush pattern. So the thing that is cool about it, it's got a seam that runs all the way around, kind of, I think it, just at kind of your waist level. The great thing is it has a, this really lovely feature of inseam pockets. They're, I think this is really great. I think what you could do with this, which I think would make it look amazing, is to have two different colours in the top and the bottom. So you could have like a, a grey or and a cream or like a, a something with a pattern and then a plain at the bottom. I think the colour matching thing would look really ace on this. So other things it's got which is great are it's got a two-piece um, sleeve. This is really really great for movement and fit um, with a coat because it's kind of classic tailoring. Anything with a two-piece sleeve is a winner in my my book. It makes movement easier, it's going to fit better on you, it's just yeah. My only thing I would say that Rachel and I noticed with the fit of this is that the sleeves are quite slim fitting so if anyone with a I've got a slightly large upper arm you might need to go up a size in the sleeve that is the only top tip that we have got for you but in terms of that everything else is quite you know really straightforward and the instructions are really good so it's a it's a goodie um yeah I'm definitely gonna make it and Rachel's altered the pattern so I'm just gonna use her pattern at some point um, next up we have got the, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, the Riga, Riga coat from Orijuice. Um, this comes in a size 6 to 18, this is available on our shop. Um, it, I chose this one because I thought actually it's completely opposite to the Yates coat. The Yates coat is very structured, it's quite classic. This has got a much more relaxed fit. The thing that I love about it, the like detail for me that I think is just like nailed it and me wanting to make it, is the back actually. So it's got this really cool like panel on the back that holds in the um, kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, it's basically like a giant belt loop. But this means that you can actually, instead of using, you can have a tie on your coat, but you could also use a belt that you own to sort of fasten it. This is actually quite a simple make. So it's got a drop shoulder, it's quite a relaxed fit. Um, it has got patch pockets on the front, so again, easy to sew on. Um, it's got a little sort of mandarin collar, which again is quite easy to put on. So it's, it's a kind of really good little number. It's lined as well. Um, I definitely want to do this. I also think this could be really nice, I know it doesn't say so, but I think you could totally make this in a jersey and it would be a really lovely like cardigan, sort of a coatigan, um, or you could do it definitely in a boiled wool and not line it, so there's lots of different things that you could do with this one and I love it. Right, next, um, this is called mm, the Honitone, hon, hon, Honitone, Honitone Coat um, by Marilla Walker. This comes in size 6 to 24. Um, this is available on our shop as well. Um, this is mega. Like, I love... Mar if you haven't seen Marilla Walker patterns, you have to go and have a look at them. I adore them. They are... They have a slight sort of Japanese feel to them. A little bit Margaret Howley in terms of a designer. Um, always quite a relaxed fit, fit, which I really like. And I just love this coat, I thought it was quite interesting. It's not too complicated either in terms of a make. So there are two options with it. You can make it as a sort of longer coat that comes sort of mid-calf, no, that's not right, mid-thigh, or you can make it as a cropped sort of little kind of jacket. Um, it's got a kind of, it doesn't have a proper collar, it's got kind of lapels that fold back. So in terms of construction, that's quite easy. It's got patch pockets, which are optional, but it also has these really cool, and I'll pop a picture so that you can have a look, these really cool, like, interesting pocket details, which I think probably would work better in, a, like, a structured um, cotton rather than a wool. 
but maybe if you interface it properly you could probably do that but um, I just thought this was a really nice shape it's quite relaxed fit it's got drop shoulders and I just love everything that she does so I wanted to include this one I think if you haven't done a coat before and you want something that's lined this is quite a simple simple one um, yeah I I dig it and um, I've used her patterns before so they have really good instructions and yeah very clear and take you kind of step by step through this so I would highly recommend this um, next up we've got one more kind of big snuggly coat and then we'll move on to something slightly different um, this is the Gaia quilted coat from Named Clothing um, this comes in a size UK size 4 to size 22 and we have this on our shop as well um, the thing the reason that I chose this one because I think this for me is the one that you could play around with most with fabrics and do something really interesting so the model picture of this coat um, they've used different fabrics for the side panels and I really think you could do some interesting stuff with this in terms of different fabrics you know I don't know about you guys but especially things like wools I always end up keeping like half a meter of something and never using it so this could be a good like mix and match of your fabrics um, it's a very relaxed fit again so that's great for kind of your fitting issues it's got these really lovely deep pockets which are built into the seams so there's sort of um i'm just looking at the line drawing it's like a panelled it's like a panel at the side and the pockets inbuilt into that which means in terms of construction actually it's really easy and you're not going to have kind of any top stitching issues or yeah everything's tucked into a seam which i find definitely in terms of construction easy um, the collar it doesn't have a stand on the coat so again it's construction it's much easier um, drop shoulders it just looks really snugly and it's quite cocoon shaped this which I saw a lot of on the high street so I just thought this was a really lovely lovely coat and I would definitely I want to make this one too but you know you've got to you've got to just pick I think probably one per season so for those of us who do not like long coats, I've got in a couple of shorter ones which I thought would work kind of really nicely and are quite kind of on trend for this season. Um, the jacket, first one is the Poly Jacket from Republic de Chiffon. This comes in a size 8 to 18. Um, this is on our online shop too. Um, it is a really nice wrap coat, like coaty jacket. And you don't see that many of this sort of style of pattern and I really like it so it's got quite a lot of classic tailoring features um, the wrap at the front is great because there aren't any fastenings you don't have to do any buttonholes um, it's got on the back it's got um, almost like princess seams on the back so in terms of getting a really nice fit that's going to be a lot easier than a standard kind of middle centre back seam um, it's got darts below the bust which is really nice so that adds in shaping um, I just really like this I think this is a really nice shape and I think you could make this again again I think this would be one that you could make in like a ponty or something quite thick and have it as a cardigan or you could make it in a really lovely wool and it would be one that you just shove on and feel like cosy in I just yeah I really like this one so I think this is a really good good one right um, I'm speeding up because I can see I've been yabbering again um, the next one I've got is another short one it's the Artemis coat from I am patterns I've made this this um, one and I absolutely love it I've made it more as a kind of a house I call it my house coat because I wear it when it's cold at home and I'm working um, it's a really great pattern I love I am patterns patterns if you haven't kind of seen them before you should definitely do it right I haven't told you the size I'm trying really hard to remember to put the sizes in and I keep oh, I've been really good so far so the Artemis jacket comes in size 4 to 14 UK sizes this is and we have this on our shop as well so um, it's the thing I really like about it I think it's it's don't quote me on this but it's like four or five pattern pieces so it's actually super simple to make 
so it has a grown on sleeve so you've got no sleeve to insert so it's got a kind of almost like kimono sleeve it's got inseam pockets um it's got this sort of i'm not even sure what the right word is but like granddad not granddad collar but like it looks like a granddad cardigan like that turned down little collar I love it I have lived in it and I've also made one for my boyfriend because he got really jealous of mine and he lives in his as well so they are actually unisex I think I made probably a size I think I might have made the 10 or the 12 and it's quite kind of loose fitting and kind of cozy so you can definitely like fit another jumper underneath it in terms of fabric, I used a quilted cotton to make my house coat. Um, you could definitely use a boiled wool. You could, you could do loads of things. It doesn't have a lining, this one, so that's something definitely to take into consideration. With For me, when I made it, I actually did um, Hong Kong binding on the inside, which actually looked really pretty. So, yeah, that is something to think about. A boiled wool would be great for this because you wouldn't need to worry about any fraying um, it's a really great pattern and actually really super super speedy as well which is always a win in my boat right next pattern we have got is the Berlin jacket from Tessuti Fabrics I included this because I thought this is a perfect for a beginner this comes in size 6 to 16 we don't stock this on our shop sadly um, it's a really great pattern. I've seen loads and loads of people make this. Um, the thing that's really nice about it is it's like three pattern pieces virtually. Let me have a look. So yeah, front, back and sleeve. Yes, it's really, really simple. This is perfect for a boiled wool again because there is no lining in this one. Um, so you do need to think about what you're gonna make it in. If there's no lining, you need to think about the fray factor. So if you've got a fabric that's like a wool that's really frayed, this is not the project for you. Think think some, something that's a bit more structured. Um, I think if you finish the seams with a Hong Kong binding or something like that, that would work. But I think I think may, probably fray fabrics to be avoided. Um, drop shoulders, loose fitting sleeve. Um, quite a bit of top stitching on this so if you're not feeling megaly into the top stitching or you're feeling nervous about it this might not be the pattern for you but yeah it's simple like you can whip it up in no time I think you could also make it in a jersey this number and have it as a cardigan um, but yeah have a have a look online Instagram's great for kind of looking at pattern reviews and stuff of this and lots of people have made it and it always looks uber chic right last Oh no, I've got two more. So now I'm going to move on something a little bit more lightweight because not everyone is in the UK and it's freezing. And actually, it's still quite warm in the UK. So the Ulysses Trench from Victory Patterns. Um, this comes in a size 6 to 18 and this is available on our shop. Um, this I've spoken about in the past. I freaking love it. It's really interesting. It's a loose fitting. It kind of coat is unlined it has quite a few trench coat details on it but also it it's just it's just really cool I'm really sorry I've just noticed this kind of really bright the sun has started shining and now I have a kind of white box in the corner of this I'm sorry what can you do um so the key features of this ace pattern are um, it's got this incredible, I think the coolest thing about it is the belt loops at the back. So it's got a storm flap on the back of the jacket and these belt loops that are kind of built into them. Um, the front has like a fold over, it's almost like draped at the front. So there looks to me like there's a bit of gathering. Yes, there is some, there's some pleating up around here, which makes the front kind of loose and kind of lovely and drapey. This is screaming out for something drapey, so think double crepe, cupro, viscoses, but kind of it would need to be like a heavier weight viscose. A linen viscose would be, oh, so good. Um, I just, I love this. I absolutely love this. I almost think I should probably just make this now for next spring and it might be finished in time. 
I just think it would look great over everything. I think it would look fab over a pair of jeans. I think it would look, it would elevate a kind of boring dress. It's just, ah, oh, she's a clever girl. Um, it's a really, really great pattern. So last but not least, um, this is another lightweight number. This is called the Cambria Duster Coat from the Friday Pattern Company. Um, this is sizes 0 to 18 and this is available on the shop. Um, it is, I, oh, it's just, it's another classic. So great features of it are, it's got princess seams down the front, great for fitting. It also has, I think it's got princess seams no, it doesn't have princess seams at the back. It's got this really kind of big, dramatic, um, sort of big, dramatic kind of collar at the front with ties. It's a really, really lovely pattern. I think it has kind of like a bit of a vintage feel. So if you are into that vintage thing, I think this would be a really nice kind of over jacket. Um, it's, yeah, it's just a great one. It's got pockets, it's got top stitching, it's got tie belt which is actually in the sewn into the side seams which I quite like sometimes you have ties and they're kind of straggling off the back um, I think it's actually quite a simple make it kind of looks more complicated than it is and I think it yeah it's just a nice one it would look amazing in I think the sample that they've made it in is a linen and it looks fab in that and you could again a sort of a crepe a crepe would be amazing for like a kind of going out jacket or coat it's yeah, it's a kind of good layering piece, this one. So I really like this and I thought it was quite interesting. There isn't really anything else like this. So I thought I'd shoehorn it in at the end. Right, holy moly, I've been talking for a long time. If you're still here, congratulations, you've made it. Um, I will pop links to all the patterns down below. I'll put a blog post as well so you can go and have a proper scooch of that if you want to. And I will be back soon with another video. Bye.